I'm sure many people have heard the disheartening news that Microsoft has laid off around 10,000 employees. It was over a bunch of game development studios and that while there isn't an exact number, reports say that 343 Industries was quote, hit hard. Now if you somehow don't know, 343 Industries was the company that took over the Halo franchise back in 2012, March 31st to be exact, when the developer studio Bungie moved on from Microsoft and made a contract with Activision. And that was the day that the best sci-fi first-person shooter experience was headed down towards a dark path. Why was 343 hit hard? Was it deserved? It possibly could be reasons behind the scenes that people are unaware of, or it could be how they handle their latest release, Halo Infinite. People don't exactly know, but there's one thing I do know. Millions of fans simply want one thing, to relive the glory days of Halo. Remember Halo? That game that released back in 2001 that has made Master Chief one of the most iconic gaming characters and household names? This game that has spawned one of the biggest franchises in gaming. Books, movies, shows, sequels, merchandise. People who don't play or know much about Halo still knows about Halo's existence. Why? Because it used to be one of the best gaming experiences you can have. Love or hate this franchise, you cannot deny the impact that this game had over the gaming market. Just go back and look at old videos when these games were being released. Hundreds of thousands of people waiting in line to get their hands on a copy of Halo. The game is expected to have bigger first day revenues than any movie has ever had an opening day at the box office. Biggest retail launch in entertainment history. You know, history. dozens of grown men and probably about three women have crawled out of their parents' basements tonight to be first in line to buy the new video game Halo 2. My point is with all this is that there's a reason why Halo is still recognizable and why it's so popular today despite the negative reception it gets nowadays. Halo used to be amazing. It's the same principle with someone like Eminem. Everyone knows about him, yet he still gets a lot of hate today and it seems like a lot of people don't really like him. But there's a reason why he's one of the most well-known celebrities in America. Because he had an impact, because he used to be the spectacle, he used to be respected by many. Or something like Star Wars. Doesn't matter if you don't know a single thing about Star Wars, you still know about it because it left a major impact. You still know about its popularity because it used to be and still is very popular. And Halo has gained the same treatment. People nowadays don't seem to understand the importance of Halo. There's a reason Halo has had the major fan base that it has gained through the years. Again, even if you don't really care about Halo or don't like it, chances are any first person shooter game that you've played on console was inspired by Halo. Now I understand that Halo wasn't the first FPS ever made, but it's arguably one of the most revolutionary. Sure there was GoldenEye, Doom, Half-Life, but pretty much every FPS game that you've played nowadays was again inspired by Halo. Simple features like being able to hold two guns making you play more strategic instead of having every gun available at once. Having a compelling story with rendered cutscenes, 10 out of 10 AI and gameplay, amazing level design, beautiful graphics for the time. Then you move on to the badass sequel which introduces even better storytelling and an actual online subscription to play games. That's right, the fact that you can play online games online with your buddies and join parties and talk mad shit, do 1v1s or whatever, and even now having crossplay with games all comes from the original Xbox and Halo. All those amazing times you've had with your friends playing online on consoles is because of Halo. I say it again, Halo is so recognizable and iconic today because it used to be cool. Bungie created nothing but a blessing to the gaming market. They formed a magic that no other development studio has been able to capture. And this is why I want the old Halo back. I want to relive my childhood and relive what made me and so many other people invested in gaming today. Now that I got why Halo is so important out of the way, let's talk about why the new Halo games suck. The five games that Bungie released were Halo Combat Evolved, 2, 3, ODST, and Reach. Then in 2012, 343 released Halo 4, which is a very mixed bag. Majority of people not liking the game for one simple reason. It didn't feel like Halo. This game wasn't trying to be Halo. It didn't feel, look, or act like Halo. The first cutscene of the game completely messes up the storyline and doesn't even follow its own lore. The art style has completely changed and pretty much everything looked different, and not in a good way. The gameplay and level design were shit. The game didn't succeed because it didn't stick to its identity. Halo 4 was trying to be Call of Duty, and that's why it ultimately failed. Next game that 343 was released was Master Chief Collection, but that's not really an original game, so I'm not going to count it in this video. But just know it was a massive shit stain on the Halo franchise when it first released. It wasn't playable for like the first three years, but it's had a nice recovery story. But it's not enough to revive Halo. Now to the permanent soaked shit stain that is Halo 5. This game pisses me off to no end. There's hundreds of reasons why this game sucks as a Halo game. Now I'm going to be talking mainly about the campaign, 
The Ackman really said it best in his six part series bashing this game's campaign. If you are ever a fan of Halo, liked the series, had any respect for it, Halo 5 just kicks you in the f***ing balls for liking it. Like it really grinds my f***ing gears why this game exists. And whoever thought of releasing this game was a good idea. I don't really have time to go into great detail on why this game sucks, but to put it simply, this game's story basically made it to where every Pyre game doesn't matter. They're irrelevant, ruins those stories. This game's story ruined the entire purpose of Reach's story, in my opinion. Noble Team died for nothing and their uses in the Halo universe were completely useless because of Halo 5's story. And it's all canon, I'm not exaggerating here. Reach's beautiful story is completely useless because of Halo 5, and I will never forgive 343 for that. Like I said, there are many, many other reasons why Halo 5's story failed, and it sounds super nerdy, but it just gets me so heated when I'm talking about this game, so I'm just gonna move on. Then, on June 10th, 2018, three years after Halo 5, was when Halo Infinite's reveal trailer was released at E3. And after one delay, Halo Infinite was released, and it was quite underwhelming. Now, this is coming from a guy who has played a lot of Halo Infinite, and I'm not saying I'm above anyone or has any more opinion over other people, but I really gave this game a chance because I really wanted this game to be good and succeed. I made a lot of Halo Infinite content on my channel in the hopes I could get some recognition for being a Halo fan. I guess my expectations were too high. Now, in my opinion, this is hands down the best 343 original mainline Halo game. Even though the multiplayer was fun for like two to three weeks and we've quickly found out how actually bad it is, I somehow enjoyed it enough to max out the season one and season two's battle pass. But it's not like it's hard to max out the battle passes when they give you 10 f months to do so. Yeah, one season was supposed to last us 10 months. That's absurd. And actually, I take back what I said. It is hard to max out the battle pass because of the sorry excuse for a progression system forced you to not be able to play the game modes that you wanted to play. Look at Last Spartan Standing, there were exclusive challenges to the game mode that you had to play solo in. So you wanted to make progress in the game with a friend? Well, you're asking too much, how to play solo to progress. And only two new dev made maps since launch? Still to this day, having a shitty system, no new weapons, even though they're pretty much ready to go and can be found in the files. Very few modes were added, and yet they just take them out later on instead of keeping them. Now moving on to the campaign, it was pretty great in my opinion. While it's a little underwhelming compared to other open world games, Infinite decision to go open world was a great idea. The map itself is the perfect size for what's available in the game. It doesn't have the problem where it's a huge ass area with nothing to do. There's a decent amount you could do and they're all fun. Hunt for audio logs, skulls, take out fobs, side missions, save marines, take out those communication tower things. And of course, play through the actual missions of the game. Now the campaign isn't perfect, but it's a damn masterpiece compared to previous entries. Halo Infinite feels like a baby's first step into the open world genre. If this was your first open world game and liked it, then go play Skyrim, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Elden Ring. Your mind will be blown. But what really made people lose hope in this campaign was the decision to not include split screen. Now this has been a heated topic since Halo 5 because Halo 5 didn't have split screen and fans were rioting. D43 then promised to have split screen in Infinite, then what happens? They removed it to put the resources into other parts of the game. Now to stroke the Ackman's dick for a second time in this video, go watch his great video titled I'm Done With Halo Infinite because I'm basically going to say what he said in his video, but he explains it better than I could. But the reasoning for Infinite not having split screen is so f stupid. They don't have the resources. This was the most expensive Halo game to make. Halo is the face of Xbox. Xbox itself is one of the three titans in the gaming market. You want to know why? It's because of Halo. Combat Evolved had split screen as a feature 20 years ago, man. On the original Xbox. Now, I don't know how game development works, and I'm not going to act like I know how it works, but you're telling me that the flagship title on the world's most powerful console can't even be played with two people in the same room? Halo is on the damn box when you buy the console, and yet Infinite has no place to be there. It hasn't deserved it. Now, there is an argument to be made whether split screen is an important feature or not, but it's not so much the importance of it, it's the fact that 343 lied to us. They had made a 5 year promise to keep this feature in, and they lied to us, they lied to their consumers. Me and so many other people have been patiently waiting and sitting back to try to relive the glory days of Halo, and yet they just kick us in the balls. Hey, also did you know that hackers and modders have been able to play split screen in Infinite? This really makes my blood boil, and I'm not sure how stable it is or what the limiting factors are, but people have been able to get this feature working in their games, yet 343 won't release it to everyone. 
It's like they're purposely holding back content from their fans, and this applies to multiplayer too. It really is like the most logical explanation for why something is so bad, is that if the developers or creators or whatever it is, is purposely making it bad. They have this stuff in the files and code, yet they're holding it back for whatever reason. I don't really know who to blame here, Microsoft, 343, I don't know. With the sad news of Joe Staten leaving 343 really has made Halo fans lose all hope. This titan of a man who has made the campaign as good as it is has now left, probably bringing all the hope with them. So, why do the 343 games suck? Because they aren't Halo. Halo 4 tried to be like Call of Duty, Halo 5 tried to be like Titanfall, and Infinite tried to be like Fortnite. These games are trying to be anything else but Halo. When it should be the other way around, other franchises should be the ones trying to copy Halo, that's how it was back in the day. COD 4 had that old school mode that tried to appeal to Halo fans for an example. There's an argument to be had about Halo needing to change eventually because if it didn't it would already be dead years ago. But as a dedicated Halo fan who has been with the series basically my whole life, I can confidently say I'd rather see Halo die trying to be itself. If Halo died being like the Bungie games, I'm sure everyone would still have respect for the franchise. But no, Halo died in the most embarrassing, most gut-wrenching way possible. People might say that I'm over-exaggerating or I'm making a big deal out of a video game, but I'm expressing my feelings this way because I care. I care about Halo even to this day and I don't want Halo to die. Nobody does. And some might say that Halo can't die, it's too big to die, it just might be missing in action for a while. So why did I make this video? Because I just want old Halo back. I've been a fan of this series as long as I can remember and Halo 3 to this day is probably still one of my, if not my most favorite video game of all time. Do the 343 employees deserve to get laid off? That's not a question I feel I can answer. I want to believe that 343 is trying their best right now, but that's hard to believe when they've given little to nothing to us. Do I believe that a different company should take over the Halo franchise in the following years? To be honest, yes. I think 343 had their chance, but they blew it. Multiple times. And also, don't leave this video thinking I don't want Halo to change. I do think Halo can benefit from changing if it's done right. If it does change, it needs to stick to its roots. Look at the Doom franchise and how the 2016 reboot blew up everyone's expectations. But it still felt like a Doom game. It stuck to what made it an icon. So with that being said, what did you learn? What are your thoughts and feelings about Halo and the recent news that had come upon us? I made this video because me and my friend are going to be doing a legendary co-op playthrough on Infinite and I want to say about half the series was recorded before this news came out. That series is going to be long and I just, I, I don't know, I didn't feel comfortable with releasing the first episode without expressing my thoughts and feelings on the situation. So yeah, even with 343 being the way that they are, I do genuinely wish them the best and I hope all the people that were laid off gets back on their feet. Obviously at the end of the day, they're still human beings and deserve a second chance. They made a video game I don't agree with and that's okay. I just feel like they could use a little vision and passion. I'm not the best with outros but I hope you have enjoyed this video and could take something away from it. I love Halo and its community and I'll do anything to save it. Goodbye and have a great day.